Welcome everyone to another episode of Fly Over Live. We're coming to you from Liberty Street on Mass Ave in downtown Indianapolis. Let's get started. Thank you all for joining us for this week's episode of Fly Over Live, a weekly podcast talking about the latest sports, entertainment, political news from the eyes of three Midwestern millennials. I'm your host, Cliff Dennis, and I'm joined here by Brent Pierce. Cheers. And Whitney Kincaid is back. Hi, thanks for having me back. <laughs> Twice Welcome now. Welcome back, Whitney. Thank Mark's you so again much. away on assignment in mysterious Fort Wayne. Mm. He bails all the time, and I'm always here to <laughs> take a spot. Kind of a sight is in Fort Wayne, to be honest. Well, uh, he's... he's actually being a lawyer, unlike the two of us just sitting uh, here in a bar, so he's all rip. lawyering. lawyering. Rip. Okay. Well, kudos <laughs> to Mark, I guess. It's done in then. bars for lawyers. You know, you should watch the birds. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're wondering who that last voice was, that's our guest this week, Matt Sosi. From... Am, am I the oldest <laughs> guest that's been on the show so far? Yes. Well, we're really no new. We're really yes. new. So. How old are you, Matt? 34, 35? Oh, you're a better actor than you think. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always like to, light, to, to start each one of these episodes with uh, what everybody did last weekend. So, Brent, did you do anything? Uh, well, I saw you this past weekend. We were at did um, you? Dorman Street. Yeah, right? that's right. That right. On Friday, Friday night, um, saying goodbye to a good friend of ours who... Uh, it's moving to Connecticut, Derek Thomas. He's mm-hmm. a good policy man. That's um, yeah. Was going to be on the show, but is yeah, moving away. Is moving away. Indiana Institute of Working Families. Yeah, that was his deal, and a very, very good guy that uh, is is taken off, I guess, as of yesterday. So we had some beers and said bye to him, and then Saturday I was. Um, I, I will disclose this. I bought Madden 16. <laughs> oh. So and so his career on. is ruined by being on the cover. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, He's the screwed. wide receiver for the Giants. It's a curse. Yeah, you're right. If you're There's a reason curses. why they had to go that far down in the NFL to pick Odell because your your marquee guys don't want to do it because of that curse. very reason. Yeah, yeah. So, so I played a lot of Madden and um, nice. nursed a sinus infection. And so no. your, poor, your poor wife yeah, isn't going to see no. you for a while now that you have no, no, your no. new I, game. I pretty much said, honey, I, I buy two games a year, which mm-hmm. is Madden and FIFA. And I said, oh, honey, once FIFA. I get these, it might be a month or so before we even speak or see each other. So There used to be golf widows. Now there's video game widow- widows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, plenty of Is them. Is that a show? Yeah, for sure. Not yet. No. There should be. Probably, I mean, should probably be. Probably. I know. <laughs> video game widows. Yeah. Oh, that'd be pretty great. Uh, taking notes. Well, just because we're like the, the, king of, the kings of free plugs, Dorman Street, great bar. They had... <laughs> Which is actually no, but they're owned. Yeah, no, they're owned by Tammy, who owns where we are right now, Liberty oh. Street. So yeah, no, she deserves a free plug. Absolutely, yeah. she's awesome. So we are recording live from Liberty Street, who uh, they Mass do Ave have downtown. on Tuesdays, four fifty pints, pi- four dollar pints, four dollar pints. Yeah, I was trying to adjust for inflation. Yeah, and uh, Not open mic four nights. Weeks. Sign up at seven, and then yeah, get started uh, at free eight. No cover open mic here uh, on Tuesdays yeah. at eight o'clock. So yep. If you but anyway, come I back, do some stand up, Matt. Uh, <laughs> Nobody wants that. Okay. Nobody really <laughs> but, wants that. But I digress. <laughs> Whitney, yeah. anything? Um, well, I work weekends because I'm in photography, makeup, and princess party. So I was Ariel on Saturday and did makeup for someone i forget by now and uh the only thing i did different i tried a new church on saturday night so that was fun nice edited nice. some photos on i feel Sunday. like i have to say like good good for you because that's you. not something yeah, i was gonna make a costume <laughs> role-playing reference but you brought church in so <laughs> I, I won't that's all right buzzkill matt were you up to anything this weekend? Uh, it's funny you mentioned it because i was actually down this my family the whole family my, my wife family. Uh, lynn my daughter emma we were down the street from here at the phoenix theater because they have, and it sounds like a punchline, but it actually happened, a musical version of Silence of the Lambs. Nice. Silence. The Silence of the Lambs is, ha- is happening at the Phoenix. So wow. that is still running out now. Uh, I work Saturdays. I'm on Hell the yeah. air live. And then Sunday, I just kind of uh, laid low. So mm. anyway, good time. This is the type of family I have. We go see musicals based on Silence of the Lambs. Right. <laughs> nice. And, I, I was and gonna every say, line you can think of from the movie, which you can't say on the air. Right. Is um, it? Yes, there's a song title. You can say anything you want. This is just iTunes. Um, I, just iTunes. I have a representative of a certain company. So That's no, but true. You, you, That's you true. do the math and figure it out. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. No, yeah. I can't let you um, get away with twisted. saying <laughs> musical 
based on that movie with that. I mean, a grade from you? Like a, no, I don't experience, do grades. Because if I, you know, oh, I had, we had a blast. We yeah. had a, now, I, I, show, I showed my daughter the movie about a year ago. Yeah, I'm that dad. Mm. Yeah. And she had a ball. Your family embraces the weirdness. Uh, yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> and so it was fun to watch. Uh, it, it helps if you watch it recently, so you have an excuse to watch oh, it. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. all the, the setups and the way they make it into a musical and... Mm-hmm. And there's a, you know, there's a dance between Clarice and Dr. Sterling with <laughs> them holding a window as they're tangoing. And oh. the, 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 pit, the pit is um, an old plastic wading pool with the bottom cut out. And if oh you're asking my, about course. multiple MIGs, mm-hmm. silly string. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, it is. It That's is, enough it of is a hook, a, I think, to get folks yeah, to make it's a go. Tra- Hashtag show, silly string. But it is, a, <laughs> it is a lot of fun. How is really the acting? Cool. How are the leads? It is really good. I mean, it's it it. They don't try to imitate the character. Oh, I to be fair, the actress who plays Clarice, they they do kind of a uh, riff on Jodie Foster a little bit <laughs> okay. with her career and uh, and her off career, right? Uh, okay. Off the screen, but Jody. Um, but the, nobody's oh, there to Paul Nice. Actually, one of the the guy who's playing uh, Hannibal Lecter is a classmate of mine from Ball State, Paul Nicely. And he doesn't try to imitate Hopkins. Mm -hmm. He's got a wonderful singing voice. In fact, um, he has a ballad that's... uh, Basically, it's I Can Smell Your... And you can do the rest. Yeah. But he makes that word sound so sweet. Wow. And uh, it's, anyway, it's, it's a, it's a, is this a local production? Yes. Or was it yeah, like in Phoenix? Phoenix. It's just no, but I mean, like, was it, oh, no, it's, it's, did it originate locally? No, it didn't originate locally. Okay. Um, I believe it, no, it's just done by a couple, I believe a couple of New York playwrights. Okay. You can check yeah. this to the see book. if I'm wrong. Right, isn't that the right, right. The book? So, the book but book. yeah, it, this actually happened. Again, it sounds like a comic punchline, or but it, it actually exists. Were you at the Phoenix or other venues for the um, Fringe? Uh, yeah, we around? we saw a couple of shows. My wife and daughter saw more shows than I. We had a group of actors from Earlham College that had a show at Fringe, and it's okay. kind of old reunion because you see mm. my wife and I oh, see sure. theater friends up and down Mass Ave all weekend, all week really. Yeah. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And your wife's a professor at Earlham. Yes, right, she the, made. Tenure. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Oh. nice. She's teaching. You're buying. She can say she's whatever she buying. wants. <laughs> and, and she's yeah. not here. Um, <laughs> but no, she uh, yeah, she teaches at Earlham and teaches in the theater department. So uh, so cool. that's why we, we live out there. But we yeah. just had, uh, she's directing a show. This fall she's directing, it's a show called In the Other Room or The Vibrator Play. Oh, really? And yes, it is a play about the first invention of said instrument and how it was used for medical purposes. Um, so, oh, th- yes. really? So there's, there's some, yes, yes, a classically, it, the, it's a classic English is... play about mm. hardware. Nice. So sure. come, out, come on out to Earlham and check it out. <laughs> it's fun. And then in that's the spring, awesome. she's directing a year in town. Nice. The great musical. Okay. So well, the props that's department awesome. had to think outside the box for this. Oh, so to speak. So to speak. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, not, we're not on the, I, I remember the day my wife, I remember the day my wife called me because she needed uh, some prop help for the play Lysistrata, which it's mm-hmm. oh, that's boy. the Greek play where um, the women are tired of their husbands going out to war, oh. so they go on a sex famine strike. Mm. Ninth grade, I read that. Mm. Did you really? I did. Did you read the pop-up book version? <laughs> Unfortunately not, yeah. no. We'll work on Her that. eyes were scarred. Yeah. 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 Well, my weekend. Yes. yes. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. 28 <laughs> minutes later. Cliff, sorry, yeah, Cliff's still here. I was like, I'm deeply. going to fit my own plug into this show if yeah. I so can help yeah. it or not. Oh, <laughs> coming off of that, yeah. Coming off of that. That was a great segue. Uh, but no, I was spent my weekend, actually, uh, on Saturday, just a few minutes south of, of Richmond in West College Corner, Indiana. And you were there for? I was recording a little web series I'm doing, a Southern Gentleman Reads Amazon Reviews. Ah, uh, yes, you can see that on his <laughs> oh Facebook my. page. Mm-hmm. So my, go check that yep, out. Facebook and YouTube, Thinking Juice Productions, um, oh, and cool. my Facebook page, right. Yeah. Let, Very cool. But, let, let me ask you, uh, to give you a platform here, could you give us like a 10-second snippet? Mm-hmm. Of what you did? Well, I didn't, I didn't memorize it, but I can certainly give you a little bit of the accent that I did. Okay. It's a great, Spot on. great accent. Spot on. The book don't lie. No. <laughs> and, uh, and I can thank well, Matt Sosa for, for uh, I, letting me. I made you have a Texas accent? Yep. And I, I learned it and then I use mm-hmm. it for nothing but good. I am so honored. Now, <laughs> now full disclosure, the, the first time I met Cliff, uh, I directed a, a great play, a, tr- a wonderful drama called The Trip to Bountiful, written by mm. the late, great Horton Foote. 
and uh, it's a, it's about an old woman who from Texas in, who's living with her son and very domineering mother-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, daughter-in-law I should say, and she j- the mother just wants to go back to her childhood home in Bountiful, mm-hmm. and she finally is able to make a break. And uh, Cliff, Cliff has just had a couple of lines, but man, he nailed it as the uh, <laughs> well, thank you, as yeah. the bus uh, bus mm-hmm. station employee. Right, right. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite because I because really I had I, to be I, really mean to the nicest woman, Jean Adams, and <laughs> who's a, a local Watts. legend. Yeah, Jean Adams is amazing. In I got to direct <clears throat> the show twice, and she was uh, she oh, was wow. in it both times. Anyway, but but uh, working yeah. with Cliff with that just such a commitment to it. He wound up getting one of the leads the next year mm-hmm. in my play, uh, the play I directed, Born <laughs> Yesterday. We were, talk- we were talking mm-hmm. earlier. We were. We, like- yeah. we were talking, she, uh, there's a certain someone in her family that likes uh, uh, scholastic guys. Oh. And I said, you'd love mm. Cliff as a speckled <laughs> tutor oh, yeah. in Born Didn't Yesterday, mm-hmm. like William Holden in the film. So yep. mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. I- I'm, glad that, I'm, glad that the, yeah. uh, I'm glad the work of Horton Foote has been used it for helped. other items. It helped. So. And real quickly. Yes. I have to give a shout out to Karen uh, in uh, West College Corner, Indiana, at Mary's Hideaway. You can find her on Airbnb, and I think she might have a website or something. But her historical home, which I was my southern home that I was doing this sketch from her porch, oh. was amazing. And she let me do it for free, and she fed us. Wow. And so okay, it's nice. almost you know Airbnb. Let me back you up on go this, ahead. And I have no affiliation with Mary and, and the home, but I watched the video. And my, you know, wife being from Kentucky, spent some time in Louisiana. Uh, it is in a, like to be to be filmed in southeastern Indiana. Mm-hmm. Like the scenery is gorgeous. The, there's a rocking chair involved. Oh yeah, a big I front love that porch chair. and the pillars. I mean, it, it does take <laughs> you to uh, the south whenever you watch it. So yep. no, it's great. I, what'd you have for dinner? Her husband made us some fajitas, and they were some of the best fajitas I've ever had. Excellent. We're going to edit this later and say cow? fried chicken. And <laughs> on the land? In front of them. No. Yeah. Was there yeah. some, was there some I, sweet tea involved? All right. I didn't Did take the, the bait. Papers? Should I have Should I yeah. have taken the bait there and said uh, some southern fried chicken? Southern I'm sorry. Fried, some, I don't some, pick okay, up on I'm, this okay, stuff. I, some I'm mustard sorry. greens. I grew up in Michigan, and I'm like, uh, Indiana. <laughs> it, it amazes me that I can see the rebel flag in Indiana, even though we're geographically on the side that won. I just went to the post office on the south side of Indianapolis, and I saw the rebel flag, and I just can it always amazes me. It's well, everywhere. someday they'll get thumbs and it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> more of the story I is do check out the video. It is right. It's funny yes, enough material, but even funnier when read by a southern. Yes, gentleman. and so, so the review it's it's a southern gentleman reads Amazon reviews. The Amazon reviews that I'm reading for at least this first season are all. Uh, Regarding Haribo sugar free gummy bears. <laughs> you can't and, help uh, himself. He falls right back into the accent. Like, yeah. And, and yeah. the sugar substitute in these gummy bears apparently yeah. is a natural extreme diuretic. Laxative. And these oh. reviews are the most colorful, descriptive, amazing mm. reviews I have ever read in my so life. So there's a method behind your madness because I was going to knock off and say, I'm just going to do Southy Boston guys doing Yelp reviews. Uh, <laughs> that, oh my uh, gosh. You should. Oh gosh, I will great. immediately steal yeah. that as an idea for season two. <laughs> So long as I get a story credit, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let it be so the record F-bombs. that he yeah. says that he. The re- these re- this state. restaurant yeah. is wicked hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I need to use my accent from Mud Creek, the, the last play I did, the, the Brooklyn accent, so I'd got to use yes, that Eugene. somehow, too. Yes, but uh, and, and, and by the way, I, I'm going to pat myself on the back because my arms are long. I'll do uh, Thank you, dear. <laughs> uh, because of his appearance in, uh, in Your uh, second Trip, play, in Trip to I... Bountiful and Born Yesterday, that led to him getting the lead in Biloxi Blues at Mud Creek Play. Oh, stop. No, it's true. <laughs> it, it, also helped that, it also oh. helped that you said that your character was, that you would be willing to straddle a whore on stage. That's well, a theatrical you know. Sense of the word, Poor I'm thing. kidding. What? <laughs> the thing he's you going. Do for your um, craft. Thanks. Uh, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. let's yeah. let's talk about Matt now, <laughs> shall we? Oh dear, okay. we haven't already. <laughs> we want to so know more. For yeah. those of you that don't know who Matt Sosi is, uh, Matt it, it works with WFYI, the both NPR uh, local NPR station here in Indianapolis and um, local PBS station. Um, although I'm not sure. It, you make some appearances on every now on, and then. Yeah, every now and then. I represent the bearded community on TV, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, every now and then I'll, you'll see me doing a pledge break. Yeah. So for the kids, the kids uh, listening on no, iTunes, I'm not, I'm not check Cookie it Monster. out. Check <laughs> check it out on you uh, on YouTube to see the beard. But yeah. but anyway, uh, Matt 
beer Matt, goes. You'll back it up yeah. for sure. If you're if you're yeah. online and not on YouTube, I, yeah, the I'm man the, does have I'm a striking the, beard. I'm striking. the first one to say yeah, I have the great face for radio because every other would be comedian does that. But yeah, the beard. Yeah. <laughs> I've had this for gosh, going on over two years, mm -hmm. and the last four shows I've appeared in have required such facial hair. So yep. I'm just keeping it. And the one time you shaved it, you freaked me out. It happened. <laughs> it happened. No, who I, is this? I remember. No, I just I remember there was an interview with Tom Selleck, who who uh, he oh. he also grows his hair and his beard out, and he said it's better to have it and not need it than need it and then you have to put on All like a, sudden, a bad know. wig and yeah. bad fake beard and fake mustache. And my wife is very patient with me. So, <laughs> in fact, I just got cast in a show and this has to stay oh. some more. So, what are you playing? Um, it's a play called The Exonerated, which is going to be at Earlham College. It's a collaboration between Earlham College and Richmond Civic Theater. It opens in November. And it's a story, it's a series of monologues and vignettes about people who were wrongfully placed on death row. Oh. Mm. It's a heavy. I so, was gonna say, heavy. and and the the script. I can see how it's a, right? So yes. you're one of the well. Inmates, the script. Or? The script is the the character is described as a midwestern hippie in his forties. Uh. Yes. Nice. There you um, go. Nailed it. Check, so, check, 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 nailed check, it. Yeah. I think the director that's said, it. "Well, he can put a sentence together." Yeah, go. Yeah, on. yeah <laughs> that's so. it. So anyway, that's in November. But uh, cool. a couple of of. Maybe Some fun facts. Fun facts, yeah, about Matt. You did research. Well, no, th oh, this for out loud. Fair, this is fairly like terrible. Tom Cruise and Magnolia. No, fair, <laughs> <laughs> fairly, yes, fairly, so. yeah. fairly quick and easy research. Okay, just right. that because I knew you went to Ball State, so that was the one. Or, fun or as fact. I like to call it, the Ball, Ball State, State University. University. Ball State. Yeah. I make fun of the people in Columbus. Mm -hmm. I heard it called mm -hmm. Testy Tech. I've heard it called that. Ball State. No, we uh, Testy's Tech. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we don't know what you're talking about. Play, play it's, named, it's named after the jar company, duh. Um, All jars. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. But I always a, forget a, that, that you grew up reference. in Flint, Michigan, which is yes. way too long. Yes, I did. I Good old Flint, this. Michigan. I grew up yeah. an hour north of Detroit, mm -hmm. and as I jokingly say, um, Michael Moore, Grand Funk Railroad, <laughs> and then me. And Matt's I think I'm above, <laughs> I'm above Bob Eubanks, I think. So, yeah, I grew up there. My dad was a doctor, so he was never out of work. Um, mm -hmm. So I yeah I grew up north of Detroit. So I'm the obnoxious Detroit sports fan living in mm. uh, Central Indiana. Someone has to be. It might as well be me. So lions. Well, respect respect you. though. Yeah, do, you, do you see all this gray and wrinkles and agony in my face? It's mm -hmm. being a lifelong lion. <laughs> it's all Detroit. <laughs> because all the other night. teams no, have won championships in my lifetime. And if the lions don't, I'm just gonna wander the earth like Lady Hawk. Are you a <laughs> Thank you, Matt fans Stafford guy then? Like, is that your... I'm for whoever can get the Lombardi Trophy in okay. their hands guy. So I, yes. I like Stafford. I'm I'm kind of bummed that uh, Sue is gone, but you yeah. know I'm, I'm hoping he breaks his leg halfway through the season for disloyal. Well, given <laughs> no, disloyal. Given no, karma, I'm kidding. He might actually. I got the hookup if you want to hold the Colts Lombardi Trophy sometime. Oh, that's very mm. sweet of you, dear. He's going to walk off the set now. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's like a. That's somehow you've I packaged had, had like a like a helpful remark and yeah, a stab in the side. In the same guy. I'd <laughs> rather be stabbed by her than you guys. All right, <laughs> say hey, how you doing, Bonnie? Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's funny you mention it because I know you your Colts affiliation. Mm -hmm. I was on the air at WFYI the night the Colts won the Super Bowl. Oh boy! And really? I, I know for a fact we uh, this was in our old building at 14th and Meridian, mm -hmm. and. And I was filling in that evening. I was doing a double. And I know for a fact that WFYI was the last radio station in the city to interrupt programming to oh, announce no. yeah. the Colts won the Super Bowl. Because if I broke, <laughs> if I broke in during Pipe Dreams, mm. um, our NPR listeners would get really snippy. So I had to right. wait 40 minutes. And you I'm, know what? And I'm, fact, watching, I'm watching the TV. Was there any like probably debate as to whether you should break in at no, all? I mean, it's, just, just right. There were no calls made on a Sunday night. Uh, <laughs> so, and, yeah. and I know all the rock stations and all the other stations yeah. interrupted and went crazy. And I'm watching the TV coverage. And by the way, the the rookie. The rookie reporter uh, initiation is not putting him in crappy weather. It's putting him in a bar during championship night. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing oh. women getting kissed and their microphones are getting yanked out and they're getting mm -hmm. hung up, hanged out. Beer is spraying yeah, all everywhere. That. And so and... I had to wait 40 minutes. I'm like, congratulations, the Indianapolis Colts have won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Here's Hearts of Space. <laughs> <laughs> not, and, and by the time my shift ended at midnight, yeah. I was going to go downtown to see what it was like. I'm like, ah, no, yeah. I'm done. I've seen it on TV. I'm going right. home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, lived the it, chaos. been there, done that. I'm, I'm going home. Right. So, so that's why, as a, I'm sorry, I, uh, as a Lions fan, mm -hmm. um, 
a Super Bowl title will erase your pain of a one in fifteen season. Yeah. So I don't want to hear Colts griping about yeah. how I was they had say, it like bad. back to we don't Detroit. Get, we gripe too much, do we? Um, there are some. There, there are some. <laughs> yeah, of course, sure. they want to be thirteen and three every every year. Sure. I'd rather be the Cinderella story and the underdog for years than the Patriots, though. So. You see, you're sucking. See, you know, his perspective, I'm sure, is a little bit different than me. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> We've won one in the I'm last a little hard and so. brittle. And yeah. Yeah. You know what? Doesn't kill you makes you a bitter old man. <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> you, you're doing research yeah. on me. No. <laughs> back to what you the know mo- yeah. about me. Yeah, the Flint, yeah, I grew up in Flint. And I, I was going to say, back to Detroit for a quick second. That's right. um, there's been a bit of like a resurgence in Detroit as far as like you know, investment and the downtown growth and, and, and millennials and like is that something that you know about? A little and bit. Because there's a and, and Brent slipped in millennials just so you know Matt. Oh yes this is that, important. That any time that game. we can mention millennials yeah. you somebody take a, drink. a shot. Oh, you yeah, take a drink. Yeah, yeah, oh, so cheers. Millennials. Yeah. To the millennials. And I would and I'd have gotten away with it more for you meddling kids you dumb dog. Meddling millennials. So no, um, actually it's funny. I went to I went back to Flint uh, this summer to visit my family, and their downtown is going through that. Kind of a smaller version, obviously, what what Detroit is going through. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, they're they're trying to bring in younger people. They're trying to bring in more tech savvy work. Yeah. They're trying to bring in more artists. I know there's the you know they're trying to they're even trying to grow gardens in Detroit, mm-hmm. which I'm yeah. all for. Yeah. Um, like. Side sidestep, but the, you know the farmers market that's in Flint is really impressive. Yeah. Really? So I'm hoping it's it's little things like that, <clears throat> yeah, like yeah. the arts, like the local mm-hmm. businesses, like the local food, that you go and embrace and help mm-hmm. out, and hopefully yeah. that will bring. Because you know, every downtown is going through. Downtown Richmond is going through the same thing where mm-hmm. I live, where you know it's like any other downtown. It was thriving in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, mm-hmm. 60s and 70s, burnt out. Everybody went to the suburbs, and then since then we've been trying to rebuild. Yep. Mm-hmm. And right. there's organizations. And like how do you Main attract you right, know, exactly. that next generation? Just of keep folks trying to, to keep. Re- I mean, I've been, I've been, I, since I went to Ball State, I've known downtown. I've known the city of Indianapolis since the late mm-hmm. 80s, and you know it's been leaps and bounds yeah. What oh, yeah. this, uh, compared to what the city was mm-hmm. once. Oh, like. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm hoping yeah. more people will go and embrace the downtown, and and even if it's if, even if you start out as superficially as just going in the daytime. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Know, just mm-hmm. just go and help out everybody. Well, you know, that's what so. you know. I've been seeing you know folks uh, from you know financial sector to <laughs> you know arts sector, <laughs> like so you know friendly. they're they're I now once you know clear of that whole you know the downturn, actually putting their time and money into downtown to make it into something special. And I you know. I might not be a Pistons fan or a Lions fan, but I root for that city, you know, to get better and I, you yeah. know. yes, and, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, and, and that's also the thing was when your team doesn't make the championship, yeah. you you look for the storyline. I, I have a mm-hmm. journalism degree, so you look yeah. for the stories. Yeah. Which one's going to make the more interesting mm-hmm. story? Yeah, um, I get that. But so I no, I appreciate. But yeah, that. no, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Got to root for him. And so. by the way, if the if the Lions ever win a Super Bowl, you don't want to film what I'm going to do. It's just going to be <laughs> really? because you said fun. that I'm going to really. Seek so you we have out to ask and do a GoPro and just follow you. A around. GoPro. What are you going to do? Yeah. We'll talk later. body cams. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Forget about body cams on cops. We need body cams on, on, on so sports, yeah. 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 sports fans in general. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, the, the, there's no further research that has been done, other than the fact that you already mentioned you live in Richmond, which is a great small town in, yes. in uh, eastern Indiana, uh, mm-hmm. kind of on the border with Ohio. So for everybody listening that's from the Midwest, um, mm-hmm. visit Richmond. You talked about how they're kind of re- there's a little bit of resurgence. of. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a, it w- was an active focus for the city to emphasize the arts, but... It seems like part of it is that. Well, I mean, maybe it's just because of that. I, I know you. you know me. Yeah. Take but a basic stat. Like, how big is Richmond? Boy, that's a really good question. <laughs> well, I'd call it. Rand McNally if I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you were saying though. You know, I know that's when we need producer is, Mark to do the. I know. Research. No, yeah. I'll tell you this because <laughs> so this is a little full disclosure. I never really talked about this on the air. It's, it happened. We, I mean, we moved. Uh, my family moved to Richmond in 2011. And people are like, uh, but and a lot of people don't know that because they hear me on the air here, right? But yeah. uh, but I still tell people to this day, it is 65 minutes from my home garage to WFYI's garage, and my right. joke is I can get yeah. from downtown home 
faster than people in Carmel, Zionsville, and that's Fishers. true. You know, I never really I never so really it's commu- and commuting has never been an issue to me. I grew up in Flint. I went to Detroit for ball games and mm-hmm. concerts and art movies. Yeah, I went to Ball State, driving mm-hmm. to Indy for same thing. First newspaper job. I was an hour. I was in Covington, Indiana. I was an hour's drive from mm-hmm. Indy, Purdue. ISU, Champaign. I lived in the yeah. western sh- suburbs of Chicago, mm-hmm. and now you know I lived in uh, it, Indy for many many years, and now I live in Richmond. So yeah. driving's not cars in yeah. good shape. I'm yeah. all right. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I, I was a little leery of, about going to Richmond. My wife is now tenure at uh, mm-hmm. Earlham College in the theater department, but um, but we learned to as anywhere find your pockets. Mm-hmm. And there are three colleges in Richmond. There's Earlham, there's Ivy Tech, and there's IU East. East. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So you have the college community. Because we're involved with theater, you have Richmond Civic and, and, and of course, Earlham. And we have a little area called the Depot District, which is kind of Richmond's version of Fountain Square, Mass Ave. There's is music. that where your favorite brewery is? Yes, that's Fire. where New Boswell is and the Firehouse, Firehouse Barbecue yep. and Blues. So there's Delicious live Delicious and great blues. Yes, there's live music, there's barbecue, there's, there's local eateries. Is this where your beer is from? There, mm-hmm. it is where In my your sandwich beer is. or something yeah. like that? No, I don't that. have a sandwich. I'm <laughs> striving for a sandwich. A New Boswell Brewery, which is a wonderful brewery, and you mm-hmm. guys should come up. You should do the show there. You, should, you know what? You oh, need a remote should, experience. Actually. We can take we this, discussed. We can take take this show road. on the road. Exactly. Yeah, we discussed so, it. Yeah, the road to Richmond. <laughs> you're Hope, you're Crosby, and you're Dorothy Lamour. Uh, <laughs> look her up. Uh, anyway, okay. um, this sum- we have a Richmond Shakespeare Festival. We just finished our second year oh, this yes. summer. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did the play. My wife directed A Midsummer Night's Dream. I acted as Saturninus, the em- corrupt emperor in Titus Andronicus. And New Boswell, much to their lovely credit, who and they are big fans of the arts, um, they named a beer after my character, the Emperor ah. Stout. And it's a Maelstrom, a smoky stout, which I'm 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 a big fan of stouts. Mm-hmm. He says drinking the clear beer. Right. Um, smoky. But it's an IPA. It's good. Good. Anyway, anyway, but no, any so, any. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they named a beer after me, and I thought mm-hmm. uh, during the run of the show, and I thought it was it's just a great honor. It was, to have a beer and or a sandwich a named sandwich. after you is oh, yeah. is pretty cool. So anyway, yeah, that that's was, when yeah. you know you've made it. You've made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get on the sandwich. Yes, I like. Thing. Yeah, I'm, God, I'm an NPR thousandaire. Well, um, no, did, you had a question, Whitney, that mm-hmm. you you really wanted to ask Matt. So before Uh-oh. I go into some of oh my, my boring questions. Oh, is this the, oh. Rapid, is this the lightning mm-hmm. round? No, that's for later. Okay. No, um, really? I oh, yeah. okay. I didn't realize so she there's came. A lot right. Of, okay, married. And so go. there's a lot of outdoor summer film series. Oh, and yeah, that's I, yeah. to the IMA. I remember now. That's what I was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you what you thought of those film choices. They were I pretty love, all over the board. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think okay. they should be all over the board. Yes, um, okay. As I do a film show on Fridays called Film Sociology mm-hmm. on WFYI HD2 and WFYI.org. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know we're going to talk movies later, but I, I, people always ask me, you know, is it a good year for films? Is it a bad year for films? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always say every gen- every year... There are Rembrandts, and every year there are dogs playing poker. <laughs> and so I, I don't really buy into, you know, it was a great year for summer movies. It was a bad year for summer. It may be a good or a bad year at the multiplexes. And mm-hmm. if you can't find yeah. anything you like at the multiplexes, go to the art house. And if you can't find anything mm-hmm. at the art house, go to Netflix. Go online. Go to On yeah. Demand. And mm-hmm. if you can't find anything there, I can't help the you. The supply in there mm-hmm. is right. just so broad so, now. So I love the fact that there's an outdoor movie. I'm, I'm still, a, I mean, there's a, still a handful of drive-ins in Indiana. Mm-hmm. In Indiana and still I'm, hanging on by I'm thread. Still hanging on. I think that's great. So anytime you can get to a movie outside mm-hmm. and have the, have a picnic basket and it looks like a Chekhov play, mm-hmm. Anton Chekhov. Um, <laughs> oh, not oh. the dudes from Star Trek. But, um, <laughs> anyway, I, I no, I think it's really great. And I know they just did. Mm-hmm. Um, no, IU Cinema did uh, the Big Lebowski, and I know uh, the IMA did mm-hmm. the Big Lebowski. They did. So yeah. I think I think that's yeah. great to be in a group with a basket and and various yeah. degrees of liquid. And enjoying mm-hmm. the movie. I mean, I, I know people gripe a lot about, um, and it, 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 it's, it's justifiable as far as audience etiquette. And I'm not going to be an older person than I already am now. But, uh, but you know what? Nobody brings a crying child or text during an art house film. Yeah. True. You know what? Nobody's flipping up their phone going, yeah, I'm watching Bergman. Yeah, he's playing chess with death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's okay. 
Nobody does that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. no, I yeah. love the outdoor movie series at the IMA. And I, again, mm-hmm. IU Cinema has a great series. And there's two, the Skyline Drive-In in Shelbyville mm-hmm. and the Tibbs are all Tibbs. within driving area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So always worth checking. You love the Tibbs, Whit? Uh-huh. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the only one that's left within driving distance. There used that's to be one in yeah, Noblesville, ABC Theater, and that. Because on Matt's show... Matt show they always go over what's playing at the Tibbs. You should really? go to Shelbyville sometime because because it's and, an hour and, though. And it's worth it. Okay, <laughs> it's I, safer. I'm, used, I'm safer. used to driving to places for things, okay. so yeah, that's I, for true. me it's worth the drive. So that's why I'm always like on the Blues calendar. And you might actually be able to see the stars since it's. All I the used way to out there. get Very my hair done there every six weeks, so maybe I can make it for a movie. Well, there, we'll have yeah. lunch. Yeah. We'll Let me do movie. this for a second. Yes, sir. You get your show on FYI. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, two shows, right? Like right, the Blues you, House Party, Saturday right. nights at 8, and Film Sociology, Fridays at 5. The question is, how, like, it, were you in your basement beforehand, like, just broadcasting by you? How did you get that gig, you know what I okay, mean? Okay. Like, um, how do they I, well, I, I had hire a, a guy like you? It's so funny, because at Ball State, I had a, uh, I graduated with a degree in journalism. And trust mm-hmm. me, in 1993, I thought I was the last print journalism major on earth. That's not the case. And I, and I minored in yeah. theater. So I, I did, I had a, a newspaper column for the Ball State Daily News. I worked at WCRD, the student-run radio station. I was there uh-huh. for its first full year, I believe, or second year. And then uh, I did theater. And I'm still doing that today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At this, so yeah. look, you can be yeah. me. <laughs> Don't be me, dear. Yeah. Um, but what if I want to? Don't grow the beard. And well, then you'll be in a series with Jessica Lang. Right. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. but but anyway, um, I I did radio at Ball State, and then I was living in the Chicago suburbs. I wrote for a newspaper up there for a while, and then for six months, I wound up working for a public station in Glen Ellen, Illinois, College of DuPage, WDCB, ninety point nine FM, great jazz and blues station, okay. and I was their blues substitute blues DJ, and I also did a blues calendar of upcoming blues events in the suburbs because everybody would drive to the city. Mm-hmm. So I was highlighting the western and southern suburb uh, blues shows. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I did that for about six months, and then I moved to Indianapolis in April of 99 to marry my now wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, within a month of... Best decision of your life. Best decision uh-huh. of my life. Mm-hmm. Smartest decision I've ever made. <laughs> uh, I'm the third smartest person in my house. <laughs> and within a month of... Moving to Indy, I got my job at WFYI. I had a writing wow. job at Nuvo, which I had for 13 uh-huh. years. Really? Wound up freelancing for Downbeat Magazine. Wound up writing for a blues magazine, Big City Blues out of Detroit. So I was getting more work here because they right. didn't have an Indiana correspondent. Mm. And mm-hmm. with FYI, I was the voice from 3 to 8 on Sundays. And that was a spot I had for almost 10 years. Okay. And wow. um, my first piece of creativity was Sunday nights, the, we would play the, at that time, we would play the ISO, the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, mm-hmm. from six until the show ended. Now, the show varied in times because of the classical pieces. So it would be, it could be 50 minutes, it could be an hour and 20. And I had to fill the rest of the time until 7.30 with classical music mm-hmm. until the show opera matinee at 7.30 with Stephen Stolen, mm-hmm. who I work with. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was I was picking out First off, song pieces and composers that I could pronounce, and then, right. and then I always wondered about that. Oh yeah, yeah. Show, yeah. Show you know band. all these crazy. Not that many, yeah, not that many. Joe Smith and the Toronto Symphony <laughs> right. Orchestra <laughs> doing yeah, doing right. Mozart. Ch- yeah. So, um, but I started in April of '99 at FYI. By October, um, I was looking for classical music, and I came across a CD of music, the actual music used in Hitchcock films. Bernard Hermit, so music from Psycho and Rear Window and North by mm-hmm. Northwest. And I wound up playing that because it was October mm-hmm. and it got a big reaction, a okay. really positive Some reaction. So yeah. I started just doing movie music for a long time. And then I wound up being the substitute guest host, co host on The Art of the Matter, which Sharon mm-hmm. Gamble yeah. and Travis D. Nicola Love do today. Yeah. So I did that for a while. And then, um, and then I filled in for the original host of Nothing But the Blues for a year. Mm-hmm. And when new management came in and they retired the old show and they gave me the house party, mm-hmm. which I still do to this date. Yeah. Um, I've, this is, I'm, the Blues house party is in its 12th year. And then we is have... It really? Yes, it is. Wow. Almost as old as my You're coming up on... The, you're 16 years in, right? 16 years in radio, which is, like, you know, in one, one station. With one station, yeah, so I I love that. I, I'm really thankful I've not had to bounce from uh, 
station the station, mm-hmm. city the city, yeah. format the format. Mm-hmm. I would it's say a format rare, I actually right? listen to. In exactly. The they must treat you well. Uh, yeah. They do. They actually do. And so, it's so funny, we, you mentioned, because um, I've done mixers with people in commercial radio, and they're stunned that I actually have creative control over mm-hmm. the blues show mm-hmm. and the film show. And then when, when yeah. WFYI went, jumped into HD2 land, you know, digital radio, mm-hmm. um, they needed local content, and that's where film sociology uh, came about, which is now wow. an interesting. Uh, so cool. It's sixth year. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we know that you um, you direct and you you act some. Yes. Do you play blues? No. I mean, you know what my skill is? Pushing the play button. Okay. That's my <laughs> that's my instrument choice. I didn't know choice. if the show no. was born from like you. No, you I, I've no, I've no, you know, I've never I've never been able to play. I took piano lessons as a kid, and look how mm-hmm. well that got me. Yeah. But but no, I think uh, gabbing and emceeing and and sharing yeah. other people's music. That's my instrument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. You could always be a vocalist, um, though. Nobody wants that. Okay. <laughs> I can sing slightly better than Pierce Brosnan and Mamma Mia, and that's really about oh it. Okay. I had to sing last year in Much Ado About Nothing. Mm-hmm. I had to sing four lines of Shakespeare. That's more than enough. More, more than enough. You're exhausted after that, right? I, Just, no, uh, it, the audience is exhausted. Audience not not, not yeah. so much mm-hmm. me. So uh, <laughs> this might be a good time for the rapid fire section. Okay. Oh, I, because I... Uh, mm. I have a question that you may not want to expound upon. You oh, may just want to good. say yes or no. Okay. Or you don't care. Right. But but I thought of it today when I was preparing for the show is, was if you had any thoughts on whether you support or don't care about um, the efforts of the, you know, the fledgling production, you know, movie, film. Um, oh, you, you mean know, the fact that there's no Indiana Film Commission? Well, the credit, the, the the tax credit that that's being lobbied for in the state legislature. Whether you so what is your wish that let that, me ask you what is your favorite film set in Indiana but not shot in Indiana? Ricky and the Flash or the Faulkner Stars? Well, that Faulkner was Faulkner Stars. <laughs> well, okay, I get what you're saying there, I but Fault in the Stars is it's more the same yeah. like answer though, right? But the Fault in mean, the Stars was what kind of made it a, an issue that we started talking about last year yeah. of why that movie wasn't shot here. And a lot of people saying, why is it, you know, the state of Georgia getting all this business when they've got right. these tax they credits? Have, they have amazing tax credits. Michigan does. Um, I think, I believe. So, Pennsylvania, is that a, New York clearly, does. so is that a, you don't really care? No, I, 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 okay, I'm, I'm sure there are economists that will come in and hit me over the head with their paperwork. Come and find me. But, um, you know, at one time there was an Indiana Film Commission and the late, great Jane Rulon, who I love and miss so, so much, mm-hmm. would, would be screaming from the mountaintops the fact that uh, Fault and Ricky mm-hmm. weren't made here. Yeah, sure. Um, now, mm-hmm. to, now, to full disclosure, there is a little bit of WFYI in Ricky and the Flash. Our oh. news reporter, uh, Christopher Ayers, had a... Uh, it, it was strange. They, Derek Thomas actually is featured in that. Right, so they what they did was... Well, Art, from, the one that was going to... Yeah, it's a, there's a, in the background, yeah. there's an NPR, Exactly, FYI. well, that's... Yeah. Well, we call that a callback. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well we, got, we got well a... Done. WFYI received a, uh, a no, uh, an email from the people at TriStar asking if we could if they could borrow a piece of audio to be used in a scene. It's in a kitchen scene with Meryl Streep and Kevin Klein. Uh-huh. Now, the fact that I knew this was I knew I was going to he- I was looking for this. I was deliberately looking. So I could I could hear his voice and I knew it was him. There was also background music playing mm-hmm. at the same time. And there, you know, uh, a stipend was paid to the station. Mm-hmm. So the fact it happened. Mm-hmm. And I think I so I'm guessing paying uh, WFYI and paying the uh, RTV6 is a little a little cheaper than actually shooting on location yeah. in Indiana. Yeah. yeah, and yes, Kevin Klein wears an IU shirt because he is an IU grad. Yep. Um, he is. Yep. Yes, he is. So, you know, I I wish uh, you know it's easy for me. To, I wish more films were shot in Indiana. I think they should be shot in Indiana. Indiana. Is there should the, be a tax break in Indiana. The, Indiana is the land of tax breaks. In you, tax credits. And, and you lo- think this would be so? An easy why sell, wouldn't you do that? And then you know when you see. You know, a film like you know Ricky or the or Fault you know, you can look back to a League of Their Own, Buster films, League being, of Their Own, mm, Rain Man, yes. uh, Eight Men Out, mm. the being number of films in Pittsburgh going you know all the way. I mean? like, what it, it does boggle them, and I'm not quite sure what the rationale is to why you don't offer folks, um, unless it's some Indiana bias against Hollywood. Yeah, I don't you know. You know, to but not let them film here. I don't but know, but if you, don't, if you excuse me, I'm going to go get some beer in a car on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm that guy, that, too. Yeah, yeah. Blue laws. Yeah. Well, no, and, and 
there's a, an organization in the state, Indiana Media Production Alliance, who works on trying to get that credit, uh, tax credit established. And, you know, the, the folks that work there that I, I kind of sort, somewhat involved with, um, at least a member of, and you hear them talk about it, and it's a real easy sell, at least if the, if the credits were there to, to Hollywood, it's an easy sell for Indiana, because within driving distance, you have so many, you know, from the dunes, yeah. To downtown, Your to variety the, of scenery. The, the, yeah. People make fun of Indiana being flat. Well, they've never been to northern or southern Indiana because yeah. there right. are right. hills and mountains, and and so it's anyway, an easy drive to exactly. a lot of different uh, types of scenery. Mm -hmm. And and I'm, I'm we got how much praise? We I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry I, I'm I'm, <laughs> the I'm a Royal sports we? fan. I'm a sport. Yeah, thank you, dude. Um, <laughs> But, but look at how much praise the city of Indianapolis got for hosting the Super Bowl. Yeah. We sure right, did. I right. the word flawless. Major Hoosier, Hoosier hospitality. You don't think that's going to carry over when a movie film, a company yeah. comes to sure. town? Yeah. Sure. That's, you know, when you try to sell folks mm -hmm. on Indy in this downtown, like when I, to mention the Super Bowl, the, the one article I read in after the Super Bowl was that in the Boston Globe, you had like huge patriots, you know, commentators, mm -hmm. just gotten beat by the Giants in the... Um, Editorial was uh, sorry, not sorry. Indy put on the best Super Bowl that I've been to. Yes. So you know the Hashtag, experience yeah. there, the walkability, right? The, everything is just well, all yeah, they're accessible. I mean, everything That's, was accessible. We're, mm -hmm. it, Indianapolis is not Jacksonville. It's not Houston. You don't mm -hmm. have to be in a car and drive. What is normally a twenty-minute drive because of the Super Bowl made an hour the, and a half right. drive. The previous right. year was it Dallas Fort Worth, and it was a forty-minute commute to exactly to things to do. Right, know? right. Mm -hmm. So you go on Georgia Street, and you know, the I fact saw that, In Vogue play. All right, <laughs> In Vogue <laughs> is awesome. All right, so yeah, they were. Were they dancing yeah. they next to the John Wooden statue? They groped him for a second. <laughs> no, a they did. Yeah, no, they did. No, they did. Yeah. The legs, maybe. Awesome. But yes. rapid fire turned into a, another oh. diatribe. Yeah. Yes. We get what, what were your What were your rapid guess. fire questions? Yes, well, dear. you guys Whitney. feel free to jump in anytime. I'm just kind of uh, spitballing here, but I've never met a film film critic, so uh -oh. I'd like to know some mm -hmm. uh, just answers to kind of dumb down, sort of like, what's your favorite Batman? Oh, um, oh, these are okay. Mm. So, right, and, and here's the, here's the rule. Bale. Here are the rules. You don't have to qualify anything. So, it just give me your yeah, answer. But, but she, also, like, she also knows if she mic. if she asked me these next month, my answers will be different. Yeah. Thanks, so, Nick uh, Nolte. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yes, Christian Bale. Okay. Uh, let's see. If you could make everybody you know watch one movie, what would it be? Blackula. Blackula. Or the you room. You love Blackula. I love William Marshall in Blackula. Yes. So anyway. because I I listened to film sociology that is Thank on. Thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> WFYI. <laughs> and I feel like Bailville's <laughs> podcast on iTunes. There's yeah. also a podcast. <laughs> I love it. But I've never heard that movie brought up as much. <laughs> we are your home for Blackula and the room information. Right. And the I'm, room. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm, yes. I'm slowing Next down question. Your no, I, I love the tangents. That's that's yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's perfect. Part of it. It's yeah. Part of it. yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, favorite James Bond. Oh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Ooh, yeah. Good answer. Yeah. And by the way, there's nothing, there's nothing. still alive. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with Daniel. Remember, remember when people were up in arms because a blonde actor, Daniel Craig, was going to play James blonde, Bond. Blonde. Guess yeah. what? A Scotsman, an Irishman, and an Australian have played the British Secret <laughs> Service agent. Right. So get over it. Yeah. Go on, dear. Okay. If you could bring one actor, actress back to life for one last film, who would it be? Cary Grant. And what film would they be in? Whatever the hell he wants to do. Okay. Because you're <laughs> Carrie Flipping Grant. <laughs> Favorite Hitchcock film? Ooh, um, North by Northwest. Ooh, okay. Uh, favorite 80s John Hughes movie? Overrated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm that guy. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm a teenager in the 80s, and I think John Hughes' films are vastly overrated. <laughs> in fact, all? I got, I caught hell from my old producer because when he died, he was not my top obituary. The gentleman who wrote the screenplay to On the Waterfront died that same week. Mm. So I'm gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna answer your question, but okay. I'm gonna say, if you enjoy John Hughes movies, what, what ruined him for me was mm -hmm. watching The Outsiders mm -hmm. and Rumblefish. Two oh. great Francis Ford Coppola directed films mm -hmm. based on S.E. Hinton novels. Mm -hmm. And those hit home for me more than The Breakfast Club or Some mm -hmm. Kind of Wonderful or Sixteen Candles. I heard that S.E. Hinton wrote The Outsiders for her senior in high school really? paper or but senior yeah, in college. You should rent, yeah, you should rent those and yeah. text with okay. Matt Dillon also as well. So okay. Go on. Um, who's your favorite ingenue? My wife. 
No, I mean like in like my wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she is I very mean, so good. So very good so at this question. I assume she'll listen later. All right. So, no, so you got but, some but brownie I mean, points. No, but I mean like right. ingenue would be like what twenty something waifus actress. Nobody nobody wants to hear what the forty five year old guy thinks about a twenty something actress. It's a little weird. <laughs> okay, anyway, fair enough. Go on. Okay, fair enough. Uh, favorite uh, summer blockbuster that is overrated but you think has some substance. Do you have any opinion? That's a good question. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a recent one. Pacific Rim. Okay. I enjoy Pacific Rim. It is is Guillermo del Toro's Valentine to the giant monster movies. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, you intentionally have three one-dimensional characters not doing a whole hell of a lot. My gripe, and where I sound like an old person, when I want an action movie, Mm -hmm. and this, I mean, Wolverine is is, uh, guilty of this, many other films... If you're going to have two bohemians fighting, mm. I want to see it. Don't give me Michael Bay editing. Cut, 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 cut. Yeah. But, you know, I want, even if it's, even if you have Rick yeah. Baker and another mm. dude in a rubber suit just mm-hmm. beating the crap out of each other, and you're giving me a long shot from an, you know, a long shot, full body scene of those, I want to see that. Pacific Rim does that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you have Idris Elba just chewing scenery like, you know, this was his, mm-hmm. indep- he's Bill Pullman in Independence Day. Oh, it's, God. It's this just is our and they, all, Day. and they all know they're making a ridiculously expensive B movie, mm-hmm. and I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely fun. Yes, dear. Favorite Pixar movie? Ooh, up. And yeah, I'm the dude that cried the first ten minutes. That up is a great up. movie. <laughs> I was just bawling it is afterwards. Movie. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, do you cry at movies? I just said I did. Yes, I am. I also. Uh, I'm on a regular will, basis. No, I will Are admit you to a crying. crier? Yeah, I will. Um, yeah, I'm. Well, I, I'm sensitive NPR guy. Okay. Um, but but yo, know, Inside Out <laughs> made me weep job, a little right? bit. Right. Mm-hmm. There, there's yeah. also a wonderful film that came out around the same time as one of the Studio Ghibli films called When Marnie Was There, mm-hmm. which I refer to as the other uh, animated film about a young girl's emotions. Interesting. And you should. It, it should be out hmm. on video. Hopefully in the next couple of months. You should check that out as well. But yeah, I ball constantly. Mm-hmm. Do I do it in the theater with my fellow doughy white film critics? Uh, not yeah. as much, but I will do it at home. I do it I do it at home mm-hmm. constantly. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's happened at films. So Absolutely. otherwise it's a, oh gosh, something in my eye. Type no, of thing, I so. can't. I'm not that good. You're I'm, not good. Just good. Cover, I'm not good to cover Allergies. that up. Right. I love this movie so much. <laughs> yeah. All right, saddest film you've ever seen. Oh, jeez. In, in the bawling sense mm-hmm. or in the heaviness sense? Um, I would heavy. say weeping. I would say sense. weeping, like, openly weeping, like Green Mile. I know I was a mess and couldn't cope. Uh, I, Saving Private Ryan, I was a mess. Um, probably a toss-up in similar subject matter. Yeah. Um, Schindler's List. Okay. Uh, or um, Sophie's Choice. Oh my! And I, okay. I saw well, and also I saw that in the theater. So I saw that when I was twelve. Okay, uh, that's a real kick in the chest. I'll say. Right. I'll yeah. say. Just saw okay. me wet. So don't make fun of me, but mine what is, is it? a time to kill. Aw, because he gets the tears in his the, eyes at the I mean, end. Because he's a monologue. lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, the last monologue. Yeah. So and that's mine. For no, sure. no, I get it because, yeah. B- yeah, because, and by the way, remember when McConaughey was going to be the I was next like, I didn't want you to make fun of me yeah. for McConaughey. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bringing um, about the vapors. <laughs> no, that, it, I remember, because I, again, I saw that in the theaters when that came out, and and because of the white shirt and the sweat and Hello, oh, yeah. la- hello yeah. ladies. The he, he was gonna be he was gonna be the next Paul Newman. Yeah. And mm. it took a while, but you know, he's, he's making he's it, got yeah. a statue, he's doing all right. <laughs> but I do remember that monologue. I do remember that yeah. closing monologue. Yeah. He does. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Most twisted horror film you've ever seen. Like, oh there's psychologically a that I have an issue disturbing. With. Um it just popped to mind. Gosh. Like, t- don't watch this for your own good. No, I would say watch it for your own good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Titus uh-huh. Andronicus. I don't because I did the show okay. this summer. Okay. Um Man, oh gosh! There's a, there are, there's a lot that I well, no. Think of. I'm really like, I'm really as opposed to so. as opposed to untwisted horror. Like, as opposed to like something so you know like, campy yeah. like Scream. Or, well, see, I, you know, okay, I'll like give you time it. to think because I had an answer all right okay, off the so. bat, which was uh, the remake of. I think it's the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Oh. Uh, oh, and, now we're, that's two Wes Craven films. Way to go, Sky Point. Yep. Um, and, and there was a um, rape scene in there that okay. I just thought was completely unnecessary um, I'm gonna, and disgusting. I'm going to see your rape scene in The Hills Have Eyes remake, and I will <laughs> raise you with the original, sorry, gang, the original rape scene in Wes Craven's wow. Last House on the Left. And okay. that's a which, um, which, yeah, which actually we kind of used as an influence in Titus Andronicus this fall. 
um, Last House on the Left, which was Wes Craven's first big film, mm-hmm. Rest in Peace, Wes. Yeah, that's recent. But this was a film that was inspired by Alf- um, Ingmar Bergman's The Virgin Spring. Mm. And if you watch them both back to back, first off, get lots of ice cream and booze. Oh, um, and, and by the okay. way, by the way, when yeah. you watch no a no problem, heavy, by the way, no problem. Yeah, that's, that's but, so this is, this is the other advice: when you watch a movie this heavy, mm-hmm. don't go straight to bed. Okay. Watch Bob's Burgers. Watch something yeah. else to cleanse your, to cleanse your palate some, before uh, going to some sleep. Some outtakes on YouTube. Yeah, maybe. Rentals. Yeah, watch yeah. Burt Reynolds yeah. outtakes and Cannibal Run. Uh-huh. But um, H. John Benjamin really puts me at ease. I can see that. After yeah, a year's Archer voice. also helps. Sure. Um, you have a Lana outfit, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, Last House on the Left is just really unpleasant, but it's really well done. But it is more like The Virgin Spring because I remember the remake with Tony Goldwyn. And and that one was more like every other horror film made in the last thirty years, as yeah. opposed to a remake of Virgin Spring. So anyway, um, I love that's it. that's pretty damn twisted. So yeah. what, what's your yeah. twisted yeah, what's piece yours? of choice? Do you have one, Brent? My twi- I, I don't get to, I, don't, I don't cry or get twisted. Actually, I don't cry during movies. It's made of stone, oh, okay. Okay. He's messed up for a horror film. No. Yeah. In what? fact, uh, well, Man of Steel over here. The the idea uh, is Henry twisted, Cable? but I. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but what I was he's like, a man from Uncle. This is gonna, yeah, so, I'm gonna sound bad for my grandpa here. But when I was growing up, like probably six years old, my uh, grandpa thought it wise. He was watching my brother and I one night, um, and the parents were out doing, you know, whatever, and we're staying there with my grandpa, and he let us watch. Like we're talking, I bet it was '88. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The original to the, the original. Or the yeah, okay. and Bloody. I still can yeah. recall laying there on his shag carpet floor. And my brother, who was three years younger than me, absolutely flipping mm-hmm. out and at were, what I was and, seeing on screen. And you were how old? <laughs> Six. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Which made some darkness within I, me. I, I, saw you, Jaws, I saw Jaws when I was five, and I saw Halloween when oh, I was Matt. eight. Oh, yeah. Matt. I'm fine, dear. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes, I'm sure. You want to talk about it later? <laughs> you want to come in the basement? That was me. I saw yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw I'm fine. Thing. What's down here? Yeah. yeah, no, that was a twisted <laughs> moment for me. Yeah. I thought I, you know, I see anything now, but that's when I reflect back on what I've seen. That being six, watching that is mm. it's intense. You know, what, yeah. Yeah. For me, it was okay. RoboCop at like six. Oh, that's oh a my cute God. movie Robo- though. Ooh. I like that movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. but no, on on the same note as you, Brent. Yeah. Um, we tortured my uh, half sister Kaylee nice word choice <laughs> sorry Kaylee uh, no, sorry she I is has the statue ran yet means it. We, this out we scared the crap out of her mm-hmm. with um, what and I don't even, do want, to, I don't even want to admit to Here it oh, but killer clowns from outer space oh, oh my gosh yeah. I don't know how you. I but mean, looking did. back on it, but well, we were, yeah. she, she was probably like eight or nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She didn't know anything. That's hilarious. <laughs> what, what's your twisted choice, dear? Uh, well, I saw um, one of the Freddy movies, Nightmare on Elm Street. I saw that at six. So that, uh, you know, yeah. shaped my development, and seeing first, that pretty early. First film, and of course, Freddy, uh, oh God, Ultimate, uh, Freddy's Dreams. But mm-hmm. also directed by Wes Craven. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, Which yeah. we did want to get to today. Yeah. yeah. To Wes. We did want to mention to that on the show today that, you know, Midwestern guy, Wes Craven from Cleveland, found that out today when yeah. I was doing a little mm-hmm. research for so the show. So George A. Romero had Pittsburgh and Wes had Cleveland. Cleveland. And, okay. and the Midwest has got Wes, and he passed away uh, just this uh, Tuesday. 74? No, today's Tuesday. Late? No, he was 79? a couple days ago Late at 50. 76. Oh, 76. Yeah, 76. Oh, I thought he was younger. Okay. Yeah. Um, just a, just on Sunday, I guess that would be. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, at seventy six. So, but some great horror films. How I'm many of these have you up. seen? And how many will you go look for now? Well, see, now that I looked, yeah, I did the research I would before the show. But will be it is a, it is and enormous, issues, you know, yeah. enormous. As far as and he, he kind of yeah. set he kind of set the bar for a different generations when yeah. it comes to to uh, horror making. Well, and and just like to, he, I think what I what I saw in a in a description today was. He kind of he kind of went along with the horror genre, you know, in the eighties with and, and kind of built upon it with, with some of his movies and then totally flips it on its head with yeah. the screen movies and it's a nice I was gonna say he almost he went did pop culture for a minute, right? Well like, and, and, and I and I'm one of those and yeah, I'm not tap dancing, but I, I found the Scream franchise to be really overrated. Oh yeah. Because oh, for oh, me, yeah. it was so. making, m- winking and nodding to the cliches of the genre and still mm-hmm. doing them. Yeah. I got a bit of a problem with. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but but it is not but for I mean, entertainment purposes though. Right. They're fun. They're fun movies. All I mean, five I, of them. They were. Well, okay. they, they, we were they seventeen when I came yeah. out. I was going to say I, yes. I'm, 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 I'm I want you damn kids. Now get off my lawn. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm watching Last House on the Left. Go away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm mostly talking about Scream like one and two. Uh huh. Are the only two that I'm talking Fair about. Fair enough. Mostly just Scream One. But, but it, would you mind going through his uh, his IMDb since you have paperwork? Since in front I of have counselor? paperwork in front of you, um, yeah. Mr. 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 Chauvin. Well, and, and, and you know what it is that I think you're getting at is just how many of these. Not that this should be a measurement of a man's success, um, because, well, whatever. But is is the, how many of these have been remade now? And Part of so, it's but the, you so know, we've got The Hills Have Eyes. We have Swamp Thing, which Swamp that, Thing, yes, with Adrian classic. Barbeau and Louis Jardin. Uh, yeah. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes, I already mm-hmm. said that. Yep. Uh, to the Twilight Zone movie. He did do uh, an episode. Oh, from, a couple, no, five episodes of oh, the TV no, that was series. Oh, no, that was the TV revamp, yes. Yeah. Um, he did uh, The People Next Door, Vampire in Brooklyn, The Fear. Yep. Um, the Fear. Yeah. Shocker. The Shocker, Let's, yeah, guy on who uh, survives uh, being electrocuted. Uh, here's here's one for you, trivia buffs. Can you name the non-horror movie that Wes Craven directed? Hint. It's at the end of this, so I, I have the uh, answer. The, the, the actress got a Best Actress nomination for being in it. Aaron yes. Brockovich. No, that's Steven it was, Soderbergh, but good guess. Uh, music of the Heart, Starring Meryl Streep. Really? And really? She's a music teacher trying to save the music program. But, also, uh, interesting fact about Wes horror, Craven I is that he apparently started his career yes, as a yeah, exactly. as a pornographic film it. director. <laughs> well, oh. sometimes you you got to get your you experience you somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the way, rent Boogie Nights because awesome. that's a great look at <laughs> yeah. at uh, the porn. But industry. you know, he he did several uh, pornographic films as a director, but then also um, before Last House on the Left. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wait. This is before, folks. Sorry. Don't. <laughs> and then and then uh, and then just went to you know regular old. Movie, you know, movie which, making, which as is, a film, which, by the way, editor, which is really movies. hard to Branch do. Out. At that, I mean, so that's the other thing. He sh- it should be credited. And there's mm-hmm. a scene in Boogie Nights where you have filmmakers, you know, like uh, Burt Reynolds' character or Julianne Moore, mm-hmm. who winds up making a, a documentary, and Don Cheadle, who winds up, mm-hmm. want, he wants to get into business, but yeah. because he is forever, li- you know, Ron Jeremy's yeah. Ron Jeremy's not <laughs> doing any movies for Fox anytime soon, right? Because you're right, is, he was there uh, is that Don link. Cheadle was denied that you know bank loan for in a the small movie, business yeah. after, but but the fact know, that his, Wes Craven was able to go yeah. from the adult movie world into legitimate filmmaking yeah. mm-hmm. should be noted, absolutely, definitely. Fine stuff. Quite also, was his it, name Wes Craven? Like, like, like God given name? What else? Oh, God given name? Wesley Earl Craven. Yeah. Wow. wow. Sounds like something wow. you From did. Cleveland, you would Ohio. Wes Craven just kind of sounds scary. I always honest. remember, and it was, it was the, a film the that. Mistake I, by the Lake. It's another, <laughs> it's another film that I love the first two thirds, and then the fir- last third falls off the, uh, the rails is mm. Red Eye. Which was Rachel McAdams I and Killian that. Murphy on a plane, I saw that. and the fact that they were sitting next to each other during all this tense stuff happening was great. And then it turned into a dumb horror movie because she mm-hmm. runs out the airport and tries to drive home. You know, so the, the yeah. whole escape <laughs> chase thing. But when it's um, on the plane, really tense, mm-hmm. really well. So done. you like that dialogue then, because it was pretty heavy. On I did. I, I thought both of them. I mean, thought both of them bounced off each other really well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, any, um, any movies that you're looking forward to this fall? Um, I know for me, I think the, most, the one I'm excited about the most is uh, Black Mass. I, I'm I really, really excited because we've been, critics have been hitting Johnny Depp so hard yeah, for no. so long. Yep. We, you talk about old people. Yeah. Stop working with Tim Burton. Stop looking like a freak. <laughs> right. Put on, I mean, seriously, we sound like parents. Put on regular clothes and act normal. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's women, sort women of are doing like this behind. as Whitey Bulger. Kind right. of, sort of. Right, yeah. right. Um, but but yeah, this, the, the Boston... Um, the famous Boston gangster who was the just, inspiration for Jack Nicholson in The Departed. I'm yep. sorry, The Departed. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, it looks, Boston, like, yeah. it looks like a really strong crime drama with a great cast. Yes, Joel Edgerton, Benedict Cumberbatch, and um, even in the, the Dakota trailer Johnson. itself, like he looks like in it like looks it's scary. terrifying. So it this is will haunt, so, trust me. And and there are certain actors, they're usually a lot older. I just want one more home run from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pacino, De Niro, Nicholson, mm-hmm. yeah. Connery. Not gonna get it, but yeah. you know. But, but I was like, at least give me one more great this performance, could be Johnny. Yeah, before home you, run. Yeah. And I know you have an island to support. 
but <laughs> give us one more home run. Yeah. The other one I'm really looking forward to is, and it's Christmas Day, because mm-hmm. it's the best way to celebrate oh, yeah. the birth of our Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. The Hateful Eight. Yes. Nice. The Quentin Tarantino nice. Western. Oh. Very, Tarantino. very exciting. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, I'm the dad. My daughter has seen all of Tarantino's films. Oh I accept my Dad of the Year award. <laughs> well, she's better off for it, so yeah. kudos well, That's to right. You. Can she yeah. quote Pulp Fiction in her Reservoir yes. Dogs? Yes, she we can. We were the guys okay, that sold. Yes. Good. Not, not at school, mind you, but no, around the house. <laughs> Well, the, the Suicide Squad trailer. Did you see that? Whenever like it broke. Oh, like I've seen. Well, yeah, a little bit. Whatever. But of course, everybody talks about Jared Leto's the Joker. Yeah, trailer, yeah. Pretty which yeah. looks pretty freaky. Yeah. So, is it is it gonna? It's he's. You have to remember, he's not gonna replace Heath Ledger. Right. Nobody can Nobody replace can. Heath Ledger. But but Jared Leto to have the gumption and the guts to jump into Try. what is an mm-hmm. iconic role because mm-hmm. you know before it was Nick, Cesar yeah. Romero, Jack Nicholson. Heath Ledger, who got oh. an Oscar, and mm. Academy Award winner Jared Leto is going to jump in. So I think yeah. at the very least, you have to give him props for guts, yeah. even though we haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah, give yeah. him props for accepting that much money to do it. Too. Well, well, <laughs> hey, would you? Uh, you know what's funny? I, I, would I made, you? I made yeah, fun I of I made fun of Pierce Brosnan earlier in Mamma Mia because because <laughs> the men singing in Mamma Mia not so pretty... not so strong, but. Yeah. Do you blame them? Right. No, you get a call no. from your agent going, you're going to get a ridiculous amount of money. You mm-hmm. get to do a movie with Meryl Streep and a bunch of other really fine actors, and you yep. get to be in the south of Greece. Yes, I take it. And by, sing, the, by the way, you have to See, that's why it's like, I, I, I sort of, I know people don't like Keanu Reeves and Much Ado About Nothing, but same thing. Yeah. How would you like to do Shakespeare in Italy with Ken Branna and Emma Thompson and all these other great actors? Yeah. Who says no to that? Speaking of Keanu Reeves, there's a remake of Point Break that no one wants to see late, late this year. Uh, Is he playing oh. the Gary Busey I'll part? watch him in anything. No, well, I mean, no, so there's all replacement... Actor. I know there is. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. He'll cameo in there, there somehow, though. I'm well, anyway, I think we're running <laughs> out of time. Are we really? I see that we are. We no, are. can we go overtime? It's over an hour. This is an overtime worthy show. Yeah. We do, we do everything uh, live ish. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if That's we're not okay. actually broadcasting Come live, back, we at least though. like to keep. I'm sorry, it. in radio we have time constrictions, <laughs> and I, I thought we could break free. <laughs> so you thought you were in a free zone? No, we right. have so right. many rules. 45 minutes. We've, got, we've no. gone beyond the yeah. original but, intention. So anyway, the, to close the show, um, yes. Brent, do you have anything that you're looking forward to this weekend to do for the folks listening that might want to? Check out what's this going weekend? on in Indianapolis. Um, yeah, no, just anything well, that's IU going on. Well, IU football starts this week. College right. football God, starts I, this week. I'm weekend. a Michigan. Moving I'm on. So. I'm, I'm a Lions fan, and you're yeah. talking about IU football. Godspeed. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, so Whitney, we're in the same anything boat you're here. up to this weekend? Um, I'm going to see my friend's art show. Uh, I can't pronounce her last name, but her first name is Rachel, and it's at Ivy and Lux on Friday night. Ivy and Lux. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will so. be on the air Saturday night at 8 o'clock hosting the Blues House Party on WFYI Radio 90.1 FM. You can hear Film Sociology Fridays at 5 on WFYI HD 2. The show's also available as a podcast and also available on iTunes. But looking ahead a little bit, if I may, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Indie Jazz Fest is happening, um, mm. coming up very soon. I am going to be mm-hmm. hosting the Jazz Kitchen Street Fair Bye. on uh, September 19th. Mm. So I'll be in, I'll be the MC indoors and outdoors. Mm. It's jazz music all day, cool. in and out of the jazz kitchen. You go mm. over to Yat, say hi to Joe Vuskovic, tell him mm. I sent you. But uh, <laughs> but I'll and be there. Food's delicious. Oh yeah, I'll be there all day, and hopefully you will as well. Cool. I would probably be at Yats anyway. So <laughs> Cliff, you're cash good only, weekend. and then cash this only. well this <laughs> weekend yeah, I'm going to be only. out of town for my cousin's wedding. However, those of you staying in town, we've got First Friday. Uh, you know, so we've got food a lot truck? of things going on. Yeah, the food truck yeah. festival. Oh yes, um, old national center at old national North. center. We got yep. uh, first Friday. Heartland Films has got something going on at Basile Theater. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yes. yes. Um, they've got um, a couple of movies that are being shown there, or at least one on repeat. I think mm-hmm. Indie Eleven are playing Jacksonville for That's Hispanic right. Heritage Night on sa- uh, Saturday at 7:30 p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Connor Prairie, the speaking of the symph- uh, the Indianapolis Symphony, the Symphony on the Prairie, they're doing Elvis music. Really? Okay. Ooh. And then Saturday, also 6 p.m. Uh, in the Nickel Plate District with a, in Fisher. Nickel Plate Blues Festival. Blues Festival, yes. right, which I was c- curious if you knew anything about that. I, but. I plugged them on the show last week. So you cool. can see some fine local live music up there in the Nickel Plate area. Good. I'm glad it's, it's something that I wasn't just pulling out of my nope. you-know-where. <laughs> Whatever. There's also two films opening 
uh, that you can see besides uh, the new transporter, Agent 47, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's a documentary <laughs> called Meru, which is about a group of guys climbing uh, one of the highest peaks in uh, Mount Everest. Mm. Very tense. Yeah. And now I really don't want to see any more mountain climbing fake action movies after mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then there's a uh, um, there's also a film called Jimmy's Hall. Which is an Irish film from Ken Loach, and it's a, hmm. it on paper on the paper on paper it looks like an Irish version of Footloose, because <laughs> it's a hall where you can have dancing and art and classes. But this is also in the 1930s, where the the, the Catholic Church and the government have a huge grip on Nixing everything. Yeah. yeah, and if you're doing non-religious entertainment, then that must lead to communism. I see. So mm-hmm. anyway, obviously, so it's river yeah. dancing. Yeah. And- mm-hmm. Well, yes, dancing okay. without using your hands. But yeah. um, anyway, it's uh, it's it's a it's a pretty solid piece of work. It is more than just an Irish footloose because the, you know <laughs> Irish politics and the the clash between the working person and the Catholic mm-hmm. Church comes into play. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. both of those are opening at a certain hour, art house on the north side of town, mm-hmm. the one with the bar, <laughs> yeah. and the one with real butter on their popcorn. Delicious. So you want to go check Wait, those out? Hint, hint, hint. We'll real talk butter. later. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Golf line. Mm. On the north side. Mm. All right. Well, oh, okay. thank you. Rhymes with uh, Lee Stone at the crossing. <laughs> there it is. There. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, for listening. Uh, next Matt, week. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you for, you, Matt. Thank you for letting me hang out. And don't forget, uh, Silence of the Lambs, well. the musical. Hey, thanks for having Silence me. is at and, the Phoenix. And next week, we've got, uh, we've got Kiefer from the uh, Indianapolis Star. Someone? Zach. Uh, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Zach Kiefer from the Indianapolis Star talking about the Colts, sports, sports writer. Yeah. Um, so look forward to you all listening again next week. Thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah. It's Mark back next Thank week. Thank you. Well, and Mark will be back, back, of course. Back. I'll sit in the second row and scream out request. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Matt. Brown and white, like a diamond before my eyes. Better pray for peace. God, my kin, cause the thunderhead is rolling in.